Welcome to the Behind the Art Inspiration Podcast. In these special edition episodes of the Creative Life Interviews, I'll be meet, I'll, I meet with co-authors of the book and discuss their creative life hacks. We will also touch on how the book has become a springboard for magic. In this episode, I connect with artist and podcast host and chemist, professor, chemistry professor, Lynn. And Lynn, can you say your last name? Lynn Mazzolini. Thanks. The author of chapter nine, start an art journal journal, and just play. I'm your host, Caroline Cart from my Clearwater, Florida studio. Let's get to it. The Creative Life book is, this is the Creative Life book, and we are both co-authors in it. It's, uh, it's, it's just this amazing book. Like I said, Lynn is the author of chapter nine. Um, the Ford is written by Dr. Joe Vitale, and it was compiled by Jessica Hughes, and it's the co-authors are 65 thought leaders, wellness experts, artists, and creatives, and so I want to start with, um, with Lynn telling us a bit about when, when did you start the journal? When did you start journaling? Why? How has it affected your life? That's my first question. Okay, great. Yeah, so I actually bought my art journal in February of 2020. And that was just, in hindsight, it's just so interesting, the timing. Um, but yeah, I was um, I was on a trip um, to do some mass spec measurements for my uh research with a student and we happened to have some time to kill. So we went into a Barnes and Noble and I just picked up an art journal and I just felt like I wanted to do something with it. And I brought it home and, you know, all of those blank pages kind of staring at me. And I just decided to just start smearing paints around and making some fun designs and like collaging things in and writing. And I just knew that um, at that point, I had really zero art skills. Um, I hadn't touched much in terms of paint for a um, couple of years. Um, and so I just gave myself permission to just play and just have fun. And I did. And I filled that journal completely. It was um, like a, so I could actually get it. Um, it was like a solid book. I filled it completely in three months. Now, um, because I've spoken with other chemists on this podcast, like I think that I'm seeing that there's a correlation between the chemistry, you know, like chemistry as we all know it from going to high school or college, and then the chemistry that happens, well, there's two different, now I'm going to think of three different ways, but um, the chemistry that happens, you know, mixing colors or, um, and then the, also the chemistry that happens in your brain from from being creative and what that can do to help you or to help someone. So can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, chemistry is actually, you know, such a fundamental um, science that it's in everything. I mean, you know, we're able to talk through the computer because of, you know, chemistry and the microchips and, um, you know, all the different materials and different things and the molecules of emotion and, you know, all of these different things as well. And um, one thing that I've become really fascinated in, it's a little bit of a um, projection ahead, um, but it is the chemistry of the actual paint pigments and the, the particles themselves and their optical properties. Um, but yeah, you were asking about the chemistry of like the process, right? Like the art making process. Huh. Um, so here's where I start to feel like I don't have any technical words for the process. And this is what really drew me into making art. And I really just am obsessed with it now. And that is the state called flow. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the how to say the famous guy's name. He's like a Russian psychologist, but um, I think everybody knows the concept of flow. I was starting to really feel like I was lacking, you know, those flow states, uh, especially in my day job, you know, as I got further and further 
along in my career, I just had more and more responsibilities and I had more and more financial obligations and more and more, you know, interruptions in my day. So I really couldn't get into flow with my work. Like I maybe had done when I was a PhD student, but when I sat in front of the art journal or when I go to my easel and I start doing something with color, and if I can kind of shut off my inner critic um, I really get into this state of flow, which I just really need. Like, it's almost like a meditation. It's like a reset. It's like a, it's almost like water for my soul, if you will. Mm -hmm. Do you have that journal close by? Um, I have to run downstairs, um, but I can do it really fast if you want. Okay. And I will talk about something. Okay. To keep us right calm. Okay. So while Lynn gets her journal, She's talking about the concept of flow and, you know, of course, I love to experience that flow state. A lot of artists um, can identify that they, when they get into that deep state of just being creative and, you know, everything around them washes away and they're really focused on that one activity uh, everything is timeless. It, it ta you know, it tastes good. It feels good. It, it sounds good. That's the state of flow. And um, Lynn referred to that it, she had started to lose that. You know, children know how to do that. Children, that is just, they live in the state of flow. Like they do what feels good. They do what makes them happy. They do what makes them joyful. And as we grow up, some people may lose that. So Lynn in February of 2020 found a way to initiate that flow again and you didn't know you were doing that at the time right or mm -hmm. did you no I didn't know I just knew that I felt felt good even if I look back at some of these pages and I kind of cringe a little bit because <laughs> like artistically they're kind of yeah they're kind of rough and raw but that's what an art journal is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a playground. It's supposed to be rough and raw. It's supposed to be that really honest conversation, you know, maybe something more polished, you know, comes out on canvas, but you can't get to this without doing this. <laughs> Show it to us. We would love to look at it. And remember, some people are going to be just listening, right? Okay. So in that case, be very descriptive with your language. Okay. And yeah. Um, ooh, okay. Um, so I actually, one of the things that helped me a lot is that I did not go in order. So That's I didn't start at page one and then go through to page whatever. Mm -hmm. I actually, one of the first things I actually did turned out to be this last, um, cover, um, page. And I don't know for what reason, but I was really thinking about chemistry and this, um, particular exercise because I collaged in some different um, things about activation energy, um, free energy, Gibbs free energy, et cetera. And I just like, you know, put different colors from a stencil. I just like dripped ink. Um, this is actually some sort of stamp um, thing that I had. I'm not sure what that is exactly. And then I think one of the next ones I did was in the front cover. So, you know, again, just using, you know, just color and, you know, even drawing materials sometimes to like, just make some marks and to, you know, just play basically. Um, and then I went into different random pages where I was trying to do like journal spreads. So maybe I have a saying in there. So this one is celebrate your individual beauty. There's some uh, pictures of some flowers and different things. Um, sometimes, sometimes I, I may have like pasted in some other artwork, um, that I was doing, uh, let's see if I can find. So I was experimenting with alcohol inks on Yupo paper. And then I decided that I didn't want to like lose these or forget about them. So I actually brought them into the journal, um, gluing them in there so that I had this record of these different, um, experiments that I did. Mm -hmm. um in 2020 we had a dog who was oh gosh 14 years old um with pretty bad 
um, arthritis and starting to have some mobility issues. So we knew that he wasn't going to live for a long time. So I actually did a spread about him in here as well. Um, sorry, I didn't have these pages like pre-marked. And then after that, if you could tell our viewers how they can get started yeah. um, and where they can find you if they want to connect with you as well. Sure. So here's the spread with the with the dog. And so I had some pages and some different sayings. I actually um, had a picture that I printed out in black and white. And then I used different paints to like color over it. And then when he actually did pass, I managed to just kind of write something that I was imagining that he would want to tell me. Mm. Um, so there was some little funny stories in here about him chasing deer and, you know, guarding our house and, you know, and just different things. So it's really a journal in the sense that there are some really precious things in here that are a little bit private. So I don't like take this to an art show or a tent show and like share it with people. Um, but at the same point, you know, I got to play with color and lots of different art materials in here just to kind of experiment and have fun. And every time I look at those pages, I kind of remember those emotions that I was experiencing around those times, even though now it's been almost three, well, it's been about three years since I finished that journal. Nice. Um, now, uh, I think I asked, yeah, I want to know a little bit about your podcast because I'm actually going to be a guest on it in a couple months. Uh, tell, <laughs> tell us about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, for a couple of years, I've wanted to start a podcast and I didn't, um, I just didn't know exactly what it would be about. And then one day it all clicked and I already had bought um, a URL, which is Art Infused Life. And I originally bought this URL with the idea of maybe making some sort of artistic t-shirts or something like that at some point. But then um, when I started thinking about the podcast and what kind of conversations I wanted to have, um, I decided that that name was actually perfect for a podcast and um, basically formed the podcast with another artist, um, Don Beauvais. And she and I interview various artists and just talk to them about their life, how they got into art, if they've gotten into it more recently. Um, we were talking with a guest actually earlier today um, all about her art business and like what are her different multiple streams of income and you know how does she approach life and she wrote a book. Um, so we we're talking to her about the book. It's just, I don't know, it's just really fun stuff that um, I just really felt like I wanted to connect with the art community. I mean, especially as a, um, I almost want to say like recovering workaholic, but <laughs> I'm not sure that I've recovered from that. But, um, you know, coming from a STEM discipline, artists are so different than, um, than technical professionals. Um, you know, there's a lot less ego in the communities that I'm in um artists tend to be a lot more in touch with their sensitivities um they tend to be really sensitive to a lot of things going on in society and I really appreciate that so much because I felt like those kind of connections were really missing in my world yeah um, yeah I started this podcast it was in 2020 and it was, it was born out of wanting to connect with artists around the world. And my first step was to start the International Online Art Collective, which is um, a group of 15 artists literally around the globe. And my very first interviews, I interviewed them. So mm -hmm. it was pretty easy to get my first, uh, like, I guess to, uh, you know, to get my feet wet in the podcast world. And then I just branched out to all different types of artists, uh, even musicians, even food artists. Like 2020 was just, it was a playground for me. Like it was just, I, that's, I played. <laughs> mm -hmm. I played and, uh, and started doing this 
Um, but it was born out of connection. I just wanted, you know, I knew that other artists wanted to be connecting. So yeah, yeah. That's that started. Yeah. And that reminds me of part of the other stuff that was going on in my life in 2020. Um, basically it started in 2017, but basically in 2020, we met our daughter, um, through foster care. And when the pandemic was really becoming very evident, um, she got placed into our home because we were her adoptive parents and social workers didn't know what was going to happen to, um, to kids and how long the pandemic would last. So I think a lot of my, um, switch into art or like you know that draw into art was really to reconnect with the feminine side of myself to really enable me to be um, a more complete more whole person as a mother and when you mother a a child from you know somebody else's womb um and somebody that has like a whole history of life experience and unpleasant life experiences in this case um, it, it really does require you to really do your own kind of self-care and your own self-reflection. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, that's definitely a big part of my evolution as well, but now I'm obsessed with art and I'm definitely like, even though I I'm very well adjusted as a mom now that it's been a little more than three years, I'm definitely not giving up the art because it just brings something out of me that, I just didn't even know existed. Well, you know, you, I went to your website and I was researching you before, you know, before we got on the podcast podcast. And you mentioned that, that feminine side, but what you just said, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read that in your, in your website, but mm -hmm. it looks really beautiful. Like it's really, um, it's really nice. Unless I missed it. Um, I think I've had a hard time figuring out how, how to articulate it, and just it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also kind of shy. Oh, I mean, when I developed my website it was almost a year ago and I was definitely feeling a little bit more shy about what to say, because I'm still, you know, I'm still working at my university. And so I still have this professional persona. And so sometimes that kind of limits um, my ability to really be kind of more authentic in hmm. like on the web um at least so far and I'm I'm really feeling that the curtain is really being pulled back now because I'm feeling more and more comfortable being more and more open a little bit on the more vulnerable side but I wasn't before because I don't know I, it just seems like professionals need to kind of always keep this kind of like you know separation and you know between personal and their professional persona and I think that's one of the things that really led to a lot of the burnout that I was really feeling. Mm. Um, but, but thank you. I really appreciate that. And I am actually reworking my website this year. And so I'll try to bring that more forward. But the other thing is that, um, you know, especially like, it's a little bit of a sensitive topic sometimes, you know, with adopted kiddos, but you know, because I, I, she's really open about it now, you know, like she doesn't have any secrets, but I don't know for sure that when she's in her twenties, that she's really going to want to know, like have people know that, you know, she had this experience with us. So I talk about it a little bit, but you know, it's a little bit hard to articulate, um, some of the things that really involve her. It's hard to figure out like what's mine and what's hers and like, how much do I share and whatnot? So yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell everybody where they can get in touch with you and maybe listen to your podcast as well? Yeah, I would love to. So my website is my name, lynnmazzolini.com. I'm also on Instagram, Um, And it's a little bit hard to spell my last name because my husband's actually from Ita from Italy. Yeah. He's Italian. Um, It'll be in the show notes too. Perfect. Cause yeah. nobody's going to want to write it down. <laughs> and then the podcast is art infused life. And you can find that pretty much anywhere that people listen to podcasts. And um, 
yeah, definitely check us out. Okay. And thank you so much for uh, joining me here. And I want to thank everybody so much for watching and listening as I share my love of fun, connection, collaboration, and art. Um, it would be great if you subscribed and uh, you could hear more of these co-authors and artists from around the world. Um, and what I do is I show up and I invite people and uh, I ask a question and then let the conversation flow from there. And Oh my, the research I need to do is actually right in this book. So uh, <laughs> here we are, we're co-authors, you should sign your book too. Um, Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> it's been so nice to be on your podcast and so wonderful to have the exposure. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>